Hello, my friends. Welcome back to this next episode on A Sexy Confident Life. I'm so excited to be jumping into a topic about being present. There is no better time than springtime to talk about presence because, you know, every time there's a season change, whether it's winter to spring, spring to summer, summer to fall, fall to winter, I really think that it's a time for us to embrace the changes, and even when it's sometimes a struggle or you know sometimes unpleasant, when we are more present, there's a power to it. And today I'm gonna to talk about why we wanna have this power, this power of being present in our lives, with everything in our lives, our surroundings, the people, the places, the experiences. I'm gonna talk about how to get more of it in your life, how to bring more presence into your life, and how to avoid losing it. Because I know that in previous conversations that I've been talking about, uh, about people pleaser syndrome and overwhelm and comparison, really some of the greatest ways to get rid of all those things that we were talking about is to be more present in our lives, is to be more present in the moment. And if we can do that, a lot of the things that tend to stress us out, a lot of the things that tend to overconsume our minds can start to fade away. So I'm really excited to go deep on the power of presence because, you know, it's not something that, you know, you can just have. Some people say, yeah, I should be more present. So I'll try. I don't believe that that's a really good strategy for really enhancing the level of presence that you bring into your day-to-day -day experiences. Developing presence is a practice. Just like if you are a musician, if you are an artist, if you are an athlete, you have to practice certain skills to get better at being present. It's just like that. I mean, if you wanna get fit, you got to practice. You got to be in the gym. You got to be exercising your body. If you want to eat healthier, you've got to make it a practice. You've got to do it consistently. You got to put it on your agenda. If you want to be better in anything and truly improve that skill, you've got to practice. And the same thing goes with being present. Some people will just kind of brush it off saying, yeah, yeah, I should be more present. Oh, that sounds nice, Anna. Presence, yes. It sounds good. It sounds like something I should do. <laughs> Is that what you're saying right now? Because a lot of times that's what people will say, you know? But it's something that I know that will really help you because you know what the opposite of present is? These are things you don't want to be. Scatterbrained, uh, distracted, Overconsumed by thought? Would you want someone to describe you as that? No. That'd be the worst. If somebody's like, oh, she's such a scatterbrain, or she's always distracted, or she's so overconsumed by all these other things. That is the worst description to be, right? So think about it in your life. I mean, examples are you're at dinner with friends and you've got your phone out and you're constantly on it, distracted. Or you're at work and you're on Facebook and you're trying to work on a project, but you've got Facebook open and you've got emails open. Ugh, you're all over the place. Or you're making love and you're thinking about a past fight that you had with your lover, or you're thinking about a future project or task you've got to get done. You're not even present in that moment. Your head is somewhere else. Or you're with your kids and you're texting girlfriends or calling people. You're not in the moment. And those are moments that matter. Every moment of your life matters. Do you agree with that? Would you agree that really, any moment that is passing you by matters. It's important. It's going to either be a memory. It's going to be um, a lesson. It's going to be an experience. It's going to be something that, you know, when you are in your last days of life, you'll reflect on the moments that mattered. 
and you don't want to miss them. Because when you're not present and you're distracted and you're scattered and you're over-consumed by thought, woohoo, you're not fully engaged. Can you be fully engaged in something when you are that way? Negative, my friend. You are disconnected. You're not fully engaged, you're disconnected. And you wanna know what happens when we're disconnected? We lose the quality of our relationships. Doesn't matter if it's with your husband, your spouse, your boyfriend. It doesn't matter if it's with your kids, if it's with your friends, if it's with your coworkers, your projects. If you're not fully engaged, you're disconnected. And so the quality of those relationships is damaged. You're not improving them for sure, but are you hurting them? That would be even worse, right? So we want to think about that. We want to think about, man, I'm missing out on experiences that I could have had in that place at that moment. You know, if you're on vacation, you know, you don't want to be thinking about work projects. Be in the moment. Enjoy that. Make memories, right? Enjoy that. You know, I think about growth too. I think about missing out on growth and gratitude that we can experience in these experiences, in these moments of our life when we're distracted or when we're overconsumed, when we're not in the moment. These are things I really don't want you to miss because I want you to have quality of relationships, to have more gratitude for the people and the places that you've experienced in your life. I want you to learn and grow more each and every time you come into contact with something or someone that changes you. I want you to experience your life. Not just let life go past you by. Because when you're disconnected from things happening at that moment, you're missing the moment. You're letting life pass you by and it goes by so fast, doesn't it? I know, I feel like the older that we get, the faster life goes by and it's like, why? Why, right? So we don't wanna miss anything. So let's get to practicing. I've got a few notes here. I wrote down a few things that I really wanted to share with you because this is a practice, so obviously we need tools, right, to make different habits really happen in our life in order to get better at being present, because it's not easy. We've got to set some, some real strategy here, and the first strategy I want to share with you is to be aware when you're multitasking. This is number one. In order to increase your presence, I want you to really be aware of when you are doing multiple things at once instead of focusing on the thing, right? So maybe you're working on a project at work, you've also got your Facebook open, your email open, your booking appointments, you're checking things off your to-do list, but how are you really gonna get that project done? If you're at work and you've got a project to do, be fully engaged in that project. Shut down your email. Shut down your social media. Turn the phone on silent so notifications aren't dinging you every two seconds. Tell everyone on the office door that you are unavailable. Whatever you gotta do, get fully engaged and don't multitask during that time. It's the same thing when you know, you're out to dinner with friends. If you're trying to check your work emails to finish things up or you're, you're touching on some social media messages that you had and you know all of these things happening, yet you're trying to have a dinner with friends, you're not experiencing that moment with them, are you? No. So the second thing you wanna do is get rid of distractions. And that kind of ties right along. Well, sometimes just the awareness of when you're multitasking is really valuable, because you'll see it, you'll, it'll happen. I do this all the time. I notice all the time when I'm multitasking. And I'm like, Anna, get back to the thing. Get back to the thing that matters, right? I know. And the second thing I gotta do is get rid of distractions. So I mentioned that, you know, 
Put the phone away. Put it on silent. Airplane mode, my favorite mode, right? Think about the things that you have to do to not be distracted by all the other things that want to draw your attention away from where you should be and what you should be focusing on. That's huge. That would be such a gem for you, just those two things, right? And, and think about when you really got to do it, when you're really um, in need of some presence. So I remember Brendan shared a really great story, my mentor, Brendan Burchard, and he said, you know, when he leaves work and goes home, he has to check in with himself, right? And he has to say, I'm switching gears right now from work mode to husband mode. And so how do I want to be when I walk through the door? Who do I want to show up as? Frazzled, lots of things, lots of stress, lots to do, blah, 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 husband? Or do I want to go in supportive, loving husband, want to know about your day, care about you, care about our life? And so this goes with number three, where I feel that we have to bring our mind to the present, especially when we feel that our mind is drifting or when we're transitioning from one thing to another. I know it happens a lot, you know, you, you go from work to family life to kids, you know, and then back to work. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we are always going. So when you're in transition from one experience or one task to another, you've got to bring your mind to the present. You can't leave it back at that other project or back with those other people. you got to bring it to the present. And so that is really important to think about during your transitions from one thing to another. One way that I really get this practice in of bringing my mind to the present is meditation. When you're meditating every day, even if it's for five minutes, you're training your brain to eliminate the thoughts and to be in the present moment. You're literally just like not thinking about anything except what I'm doing right now. I'm sitting here I'm either listening to the birds or I'm listening to some music or my breath. I'm not thinking about anything except how my body feels, how my breath sounds, how the air feels, what's around me. I'm sitting with my feet on the floor. I've got a great posture. I think about my body. I'm here in Anna's world. There's no other thoughts going on. That's a practice, and that's what the most peaceful minds have mastered. Because trust me, people, my thoughts start to come in. Oh, yeah. And I got to swat them to the side and be like, get out of here. Boom, boom. But meditation is a way of bringing your mind into the present. And when you're practicing meditation, you're doing that. You got to check in on those thoughts. You've got to choose to engage more. Right? Check in with your thoughts and choose to be fully engaged more often in your present moment. So if, if, you're, if you're like, you know, with your husband or boyfriend or someone that you care about, your girlfriend, and you're sitting there and you're kissing them and your mind is nowhere in that moment, you better get your mind there, right? Because that disconnect is taking and stealing from your connection, from your intimacy. It's stealing away that relationship that you've built years for, right? You've been working hard for that. And if you lost it, you'd be devastated, right? And so we've got to choose to engage more. You know, you're being aware of it is important, but choose to engage and get in there. Say, I'm right now here with this person, with this friend, with this child. I want to be here with them, fully dialed into them. My thoughts, my presence, and everything. Because you know sometimes you can be there, but not even be there. Am I right? And then the last thing I want you to think about when it comes to improving your level of presence, 
is decide to make this a life principle. Not just a good idea, but a core value that you have for your life. You know, when you do that, it changes your perspective on how you really implement these habits. Because it could be a good idea. Yeah, Anna, great podcast today. I should be more present. Good, good talk, you know? It's like I have these talks with people all the time. But whether they go and they take action on it depends on one thing. Whether they truly embraced it as a core value of how they want to live their life and who they are. I want to truly be remembered as a person who is fully engaged and present in my, in my moments with people, you know, with, with my family, when I'm with my family, with my work, when I'm with my work, with my team, when I'm with my team, with my husband, when I'm with my husband, friends, when I'm with friends, so that people don't feel that they can't really get a piece of me, even when I'm there, you know, ask your friends, Hey, when we're together, do you feel like I'm really here with you? Am I fully engaged? Be aware of that. Get rid of distractions. Bring your mind into the present more often. So that, in that includes some meditation, some checking in with your thoughts, some choosing to be fully engaged. And if you do value this as a core principle, you'll start to practice these things more often. It won't just be a good idea. You'll start telling your friends to do it. You know, you'll start preaching it like I am. Good. Because once you become a leader and a preacher, that means you're really instilling that value into your life. That means when you do it, people are going to hold you accountable. They'll be like, hey, you tell me to put my phone away. You should put your phone away. And you're like, oh, that's right. Shoot. I told you to do that. I hold you accountable. So preach it. Teach it. Share this. You know, make it a goal for you and your friends or you and your family to have this real kind of connection that you're going to commit to being more present with each other when it's appropriate. Because there's a time and a place for everything, right? And I really want you to have those improved relationships throughout your life. More gratitude, greater productivity, right? Greater joy and fulfillment, less stress on things. I think that's so important. Your growth, your learning is going to improve. The quality of your life experiences will shoot through the roof. And that is the whole point of this, of this podcast today, is that the power of presence is the improvement in the quality of your life. And what matters most at the end of our lives, as we take our very last breath, I'm not afraid because I know that every day that I'm here, every day that I'm blessed to live this life, I'm trying to live it the best way I know how. And that's to be in those moments, to share them with people I love, to get things done that I wanna do, and to avoid just that disconnection from the things that really matter to me. I hope you will practice the power of presence and you'll take this to heart and you'll really instill this into your life and the people that you love. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.